Good afternoon. Uh, it's 1.30 p.m. and we're uh, ready to reconvene the Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices meeting. Um, and our next topic up is diphtheria and tetanus toxoids. Um, so I will be um, uh, turning things over to Dr. Hughes. Thank you. Um, so good afternoon. I'll be speaking today with Dr. Santoli and will provide an update on CDC's guidance for TD vaccines for young children. Next slide. Next slide. Okay. As part of the routine vaccination schedule, CDC recommends a primary series of DTAP, the pediatric diphtheria, tetanus, and pertussis containing vaccines. For children less than seven who developed a contraindication to pertussis containing vaccines, CDC previously recommended the pediatric diphtheria and tetanus toxoid vaccine, or DT, instead of DTAP. Recently, the sole DT vaccine manufacturer in the U.S. discontinued DT production, and the last available lot expired in April 2023. There is no longer DT vaccine available in the United States. Next slide. As a reminder, the only contraindication specific to the pertussis component in DTAP is encephalopathy within seven days of vaccination which is not attributed to another cause. While we don't know the exact number, the occurrence of this adverse reaction is extremely rare. In light of DT no longer being an available option, CDC issued updated vaccination guidance for the use of TD in young children with a contraindication to pertussis containing vaccines. Next slide. So here's CDC's current guidance. CDC recommends young children receive DTAP as the first dose in the diphtheria, tetanus, and pertussis childhood vaccination series. CDC recommends continued use of DTAP unless a contraindication to pertussis containing vaccines develops. For young children who do develop a contraindication to pertussis containing vaccines, vaccine providers may administer TD for all recommended remaining doses in place of DTAP. Next slide, please. So TD is a tetanus and diphtheria toxoid only formulation. And note that the use of TD in this situation would be an off-label use as TD is only licensed for ages seven and older. TD contains a lower dose of diphtheria toxoid compared to DT. And the impact of this lower dose on the protection provided against diphtheria in young children is uncertain. There are no available data evaluating the effectiveness of TD against diphtheria when used as part of the primary series in young children. And there are a few available studies that look at its use as a booster dose for young children or in the primary series for older children and adults. The limited data are mixed and some suggest that low dose diphtheria toxoid containing vaccines may not reliably generate a protective diphtheria response in older children and adults. Thus, children may have less protection against diphtheria and no additional protection against pertussis if they receive TD instead of DTAP. Next slide. CDC has publicly posted this guidance on its website that may be found here. In order to be covered by VFC for children less than seven years, a minor update is needed. So I will turn it over to Dr. Santoli to walk through an update on current TD supply and the proposed VFC updates. Thank you. Next slide. Next slide. So as Dr. Hughes mentioned, I want to give a, a supply update prior to walking through the VFC resolution. So Mass Biologics has recently discontinued their protect production of TD vaccine, which is called TD Vax. And that vaccine is exclusively distributed in the US by Griffles, who expects to have product available through approximately June of this year. Sanofi Pasteur, who manufactures Tenovac, which is the other licensed TD vaccine in the US, is currently taking steps to augment their available supply of this vaccine but it is anticipated that the supply of TD vaccine in the U.S. market will be constrained during 2024. 
and as a result, temporary ordering controls are being put into place in the public and private sectors. In addition, it's also important to note that Tdap vaccine is available from both U.S. licensed manufacturers without supply constraints at this time. And finally, based on the rarity of developing a contraindication to pertussis-containing vaccine, the temporarily constrained supply of TD vaccine is not anticipated to prevent providers from using TD vaccine for the children in the VFC program for whom it's indicated. Next slide. Next, we're going to walk through some updates to the current resolution for vaccines to prevent diphtheria, tetanus, and pertussis. And you'll notice that the red, the text that is in red font is what's new. All the text in black font is unchanged from the existing resolution. So the purpose of the resolution, which is shown here, is twofold. First, to add TD vaccine for use in children less than seven years of age for whom receipt of the pertussis component is contraindicated. And second, to update the language regarding the Tdap booster in the resolution to align with the ACIP recommendations. Next slide. So the eligible groups component of the resolution is unchanged. Next slide. In the recommended schedule and intervals component, there are two tables. This table is for persons aged less than seven years of age, and you can see that two rows have been added to the table for the use of TD vaccine for both of the currently available products um, for four, six, 15 to 18 months and four to six years. There's also a new table note, and we'll get to that in just a minute. Next slide. The first five table notes are unchanged. Next slide. Table notes six through eight are unchanged, but table note nine is new and indicates that the use of tetanus toxoid and diphtheria toxoid containing vaccine is appropriate if encephalopathy not attributable to another identifiable cause occurs within seven days of the administration of a previous dose of pertussis containing vaccine. And then there's a link for more information, which actually points to the uh, web page that Dr. Hughes showed in her last slide. Next slide. The second table in this recommended schedule and intervals component is for persons aged 7 to 18 years of age. And there is no change to the body of the table. Next slide but there is an update to the second table note to more closely align with the language in the current ACIP guidance. Persons aged 11 to 18 years should receive a single booster dose of Tdap, preferably at preventive care visits at ages 11 to 12 years. The booster dose is not necessary if the Tdap dose was given after the ninth birthday. The other table notes, as you can see, are unchanged. Next slide. Table notes four through six are unchanged. Next slide. There's no change to the links for the dosage or the contraindications and precautions. Next slide. And there's no change to the statement at the end of the resolution, which just indicates that any ACIP recommendations which are published regarding diphtheria, tetanus, and pertussis vaccination within six months would be incorporated by reference into the resolution. Next slide. And that concludes um, the presentation. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Hughes and Dr. Santoli. Are there any questions for either of the speakers? Dr. Lair. Thank you for that presentation. Um, it looked like the Griffles vaccine was still on the schedule. When that goes away in June, what happens next? Do you mean with regard to the um, the tables, the, the resolution, or not, or if I understood correctly, I thought that the Griffles would not be producing something the, after June. Right, it's available through through, June. through okay. sometime in June, but it won't be, be available beyond that. Yes. Okay, so then if it's on the table now in June, what happens to that? Does it, does it come off the table? 
Um, we, could, a, we could sometimes, I, I think we don't necessarily always remove something right away if it's not available. We certainly could plan to do that if we have time to do that at the June meeting. Okay, I'm just, I'm just curious, thank you. Dr. Long. And with anticipa anticipation that big T, little d, is frequently not stocked in places like emergency rooms anymore, that um, there already is language for sure in the Red Book, which I only know, you know, the pertussis work group of the CDC was disbanded a few years ago. So I'm not quite as up to date on the CDC recommendations about this. But there is language that TDAP can be used if there is no big T, little d. And is that language also in your and CDC's lexicon? Because I think there won't, you, people are not going to stock big T, little d, and big T, little d, a, big P. So, so for the, on the resolution side of things, TDAP is absolutely covered. Um, it's, it's, it's not covered for the persons who are under seven, but it's covered for others. Um, in terms of the recommendations, I will turn that over to Dr. Hughes. Yes, and that rec ACIP's previous recommendation that TDAP can be used in lieu of TD will, would remain. Great, thank you. Dr. Lear? Oh, okay. Uh, are there any other questions? Uh, Dr. Sinaeus. Hi. Uh, could you go back to the table that has all the um, slide 12? It's not up yet. I just had a question about um, the TD uh, would not be, it, it's only approved after the uh, four month vaccine because presumably there would have had to be a reaction to the first DTAP um, vaccine that would have led you to go down that pathway. And I'm just wondering if there's a way to make that a little bit clearer from in that table. Um, I know that it starts at the four months, um, but just to... Um, I'm sorry. Do that you mean it's table? No. no it was um, page slide 12. Slide 12. Yes. That one. So the TD would only be if um, they had already received the DTAP dose and they had encephalopathy within seven uh, days of that, and that's when that scenario would be uh, in play. I'm just not sure that. Um, looking at this table, that that's fully evident. So I don't know if there's just a way to make that clearer. Well, I think we could look at table and, table note nine, which is I think it's two slides up, and maybe we could make sure it's clear there. I, I um, it it goes. Sorry, yeah, here. So. Are you talking about perhaps including that into this footnote seven? I, I, I think it's probably, is it in the link? Yes, that guidance is in that link about young children with a contraindication to pertussis containing vaccines. It includes all of that, the full guidance there. Um, I see that uh, Ms. Uh, Ms. Deshaun, did you want to make a comment or ask a question? Yeah, thanks. Um, this is Dana Tashan from National Association of Pediatric Nurse Practitioners. And I don't know if this really fits um, into this with my question, um, but just given the, the waning immunity that we have seen with pertussis and the theory outbreaks in Nigeria, I, my thought is always, why don't we give a booster um, as the kids get older? Um, so we give it at that 11-year-old, but you know, we they leave our office at 18 and then they don't obviously seek that vaccine um, quickly into those adult offices. Is there, a, is there any thought into um, a booster when we know some of those are waning immunities um, with that pertussis does, and literature has shown after three or four years with that? So 
T TD or TDAP are recommended for boosters every 10 years. And with a most recent ACIP recommendation, TDAP can be used in lieu of DTAP. Um, and the, ep um, the waning immunity from the pertussis vaccine, I think, uh, may uh, lead to the decision that we that the priority for boosting pertussis every 10 years is not as high as for the tetanus and diphtheria component. Dr. Long. And having been on the pertussis work group for years and um, when it was disbanded, rightfully so, <clears throat> um, because the longevity of protection from Tdap is short, <coughs> the cost effectiveness did not support more frequent uh, administration of Tdap or AP. And so we await a better vaccine uh, that will be more protective and could, could boost immunity. Um, could we get the vote language back up for the VFC vote? So because uh, we do need to, um, because TD is not currently included in the VFC program, um, there's a, a proposal to, um, uh, to add it to the VFC resolution, and um, this is the proposed vote language. Um, do, are there any questions about this, and do we have a motion? Dr. Daly. Motion to accept this wording for Okay, uh, Dr. Long has moved to accept the wording. Uh, Dr. Cotton? I second that. Uh, and Dr. Cotton has seconded. So um, we will be voting on this for the VFC program um, later on when we do our votes. Are there any additional questions or comments or discussion on this? So we break for five. Yeah. So um, we're gonna take a short break, just, just a, a few minutes uh, to allow us to get our public comment speakers on the line. So those of you who are um, Intending on getting up out of your chair, don't go very far away because we're going to be re reconvening in just a few minutes. Thank you. <laughs> 